Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Massimo Fatato, who is General Manager, CMS OSS Worldwide Practice at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Massimo, great to see you again. Nice to see you and again. Thanks Martin. for talking to us. So now, last month, HPE announced an instantiation of your rapidly growing partner ecosystem, the Open NFV Partner Portal. And what does the rapidly increasing number of VNF partners mean to the performance of HPE NFV Director and the new HPE Service Director? The uh, NFV Director is designed to orchestrate the onboarding of uh, virtual function as well as to handle the uh, bringing together those functions to provide to the level above services that then carrier can sell to their customer. The fact that in HP we have built this uh, ecosystem and this onboarding program to um, uh, bring this VNF partners uh, under our uh, ecosystem umbrella, it's uh, completed by the capability the NFV director can provide to carriers to facilitate this onboarding. Now, uh, NFV director, like any other equipment component in HP is designed to be open and multi-vendor. That's, uh, um, that's the way HP before and now Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, philosophy works. And uh, because of that, uh, the NFE director specifically does not constrain any car carrier to, uh, to be deployed if they want to um, you know, go for a different solution, different architecture, or if they want to onboard a virtual function uh, on a side of uh, the orchestrator itself. So it's completely open and uh, provides, uh, again, a multi-vendor approach. With the service director, service director sits on top of uh, the NFV director. So we can look at our infrastructure as a set of domains, whether they are the physical or the new virtual, whether it's a network domain or a data center domain. So the, net, the NFV director is designed to screen, to separate, uh, the virtual domain, domain from the service view. The service director orchestrates the service view across, as I said before, different domains, whether we can separate them simply as a virtual or physical, or if you want to have more granularity, um, you know, within the virtual, you will have different VNFs with different domains, as well as, as it is today in the legacy system, you have different domains like transmission network, like switching, like IP, and so on and so forth. I know that HP NFV Director has already been involved in a large number of proofs of concept. What about the new HPE Service Director? Have you got any customers yet? The answer is yes, and uh, but behind this answer we probably need to build a bit of history. Uh, you uh, mentioned at the very beginning of this interview that uh, NFV uh, has been there for a while. NFV Director, HP before and now HP Enter Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, has been pioneering this uh, orchestration, um, the, the production of this orchestration component coming out of the Etsy um, uh, NFV uh, framework. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we measure the success of NFV Director out of uh, the number of POC, the proof of concept that we have done, we can say the NFV Director is extremely successful because we already have around 50 uh, to 60 POC around the world with leading carriers in the world. Uh, and this is, again, there are though uh, critics to this one, they're saying success is not measured against POC, it's measured against the, uh, the number of uh, um, production, the number of effective in, uh, in deployments that you have with, with the product. And this is true, and I agree completely with that. So with NFV Director, after such a long streak of uh, POC, we are going into production gradually in a number of, uh, in a number of accounts. And this is uh, helping also the intake of the service director. Why? Because there is no need for service provider to uh, prove what we can do to support them in the OSS transformation. And therefore, they are already asking us to go into production directly with the service director. And this is for two reasons. One, the one that I just mentioned, an FE director is already there. A service director will be the natural evolution of that. But most importantly, because an FE director anticipated the times and uh, you know went into this, so we, came, we came to the market before the NFE was a reality. Today, NFE is a reality, carrier needs uh, to manage, as I said before, end-to-end -end services and customer experience across 
virtual and physical, hence they require service director to go into production very soon. And that's why we have probably more customer in production on the service director than NFE director. They will converge and I hope that it's going to be successful for us, but most importantly for our customers. Massimo, what do you think is the largest opportunity for CSPs who are the early adopters of NFE technologies? It, this is a very as I say, it's, it's a one million dollar question. Mm. I don't think I have an answer that fits all. I think that as anything else, as I think in, in, in any industry, early adopters will have benefits and uh, challenges. The challenge is, as I mentioned before, is that this journey is going to be uh, full of peril, full of, uh, of obstacles. So they will encounter obstacles and the, the uh, later cameras will avoid. Uh, however, at the same time, it is a great opportunity because, for two reasons. One, because they will reap the benefit of the NFE longer before than others, so they can be more competitive before than others, before the late comers. Um, and the, you know, now the, the, the benefits of NFE are probably known to everyone. We're talking about uh, agility, hence time, faster time to market, hence uh, um, um, better competitiveness. We're talking about uh, better OPEX, better CAPEX, and therefore, again, I, I'm, uh, I strongly believe that they will benefit out of this longer before than the, uh, than the, than the late, the late cameras, the, the laggards, as they're called in, in marketing language. Uh, but there is also another element that we tend to forget in, when we talk about NFE, especially from a management viewpoint, monetization of NFE. Up to today, the uh, focus of the, the industry is very much on can we deploy uh, servers instead of big, 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 uh, you know, uh, central offices or bureaus? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, can we manage a service and so on and so forth? So it's very much technology oriented. But I believe that there is also an element of the NFE is bringing on the table that can be effectively uh, leveraged to increase the top line for carriers in terms of again monetizing some of the um, benefits that the. Uh, NFE will bring to, to them. Hence, those that uh, will adopt NFE earlier will be able to uh, capitalize on that, hence not just, as I said before, increasing their competitiveness, but possibly um, you know, going into certain new markets faster than others, hence you know, uh, reaping the benefit of uh, you know, a better top line in the, in the medium long term. A final question then to you, Massimo. When do you think that the talks we have, the conversation in general, will swing around from about being about bridging physical and virtualized infrastructure to managing the virtualized infrastructure? As a man of the industry, I've been in the telco industry all my career, the answer is that it will never happen. And I'm not pessimistic, I'm probably realistic. In the telco industry, many uh, new technology or many new waves came in uh, as the promise to change the whole world. And eventually what happened was that the old world uh, stayed with the new world, so there's going to be a transition and the coexistence of the two worlds. More importantly, now I'm going more on the technology side. I don't believe that every network function, at least not in the short term, can be effectively virtualized. Some of the uh, network function will have to stay on a, let's say, physical level, um, and maybe new technology will come to help us virtualize the whole the whole telco world. But until then, I think there's going to be a coexistence between virtual and physical. And hence the importance, I go back to what I was saying before, to manage, to handle service view end-to-end -end across this uh, uh, plethora of different systems, whether they're virtual or physical. Really interesting answer to a really interesting subject. Massimo Fatato, as usual, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Thank you.